everyone, so I'm finally back with another video. I'm so sorry, it's been like probably months since I last filmed one. Um, I'm not very good at time management and I've been really busy tutoring. Um, but I'm actually here and I've decided to try and bash out as many videos today as I possibly can. So today, today I'm going to be starting with protein synthesis. Now remember proteins are biological molecules and they're made up of long chains of amino acids which fold together to form a protein. Protein are very useful molecules, we find them obviously in enzymes. Keratin, collagen, these are structural proteins. So proteins are very much part of our lives and it's, they're very important and we need to know how to build them. And it's quite a complicated process. Now in terms of controlling what proteins get made, you need to dictate the, the order of the amino acids in order to produce the correct protein and this is a very complicated process involving genes. It's important that you know the definition of a gene, which is that it is a section of DNA which codes for a particular protein. Now, DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid and it is the basic building blocks. DNA dictates what our personalities are like, what we look like, our characteristics. It's a very important molecule and you need to know that it is arranged in a double helix, which effectively means it's like a ladder that twists on itself, um, hence the helix. The DNA is found inside chromosomes and chromosomes are these structures that we find in the nucleus of the cell because remember the nucleus contains the genetic information. So we have our nucleus which contains chromosomes, remember it contains 23 pairs in most body cells, the exception here are our sex cells, the gametes, so the sperm and eggs, but that's a video on mitosis and meiosis which I'm actually going to try and film next. So we have our chromosomes and inside we find our DNA. What we need to do in order to produce proteins is we need to copy that DNA we need to bring it to the ribosome inside the cell and we need to carry out a process called translation which will actually cause the amino acids to be built up in the correct sequence. But I digress, that's a bit further on in the video. If we look at our DNA molecule, you'll remember that there are four bases, A, C, T and G. So that's adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine. And, so, and what they do is they pair up complementary base pairs is what we call it. So if you have an adenine, it always goes with thymine. And if you have a cytosine, then it always goes with guanine. And the way to remember which one pairs with which is just remember that the straight letters, the A and the T go together, and the curved letters, the C and the G go together. If you don't like the names, adenine, cytosine, thymine, guanine, don't worry about it. Just remember their capital letters. Now, so we've got the middle part. So the, these bases are the rungs of our DNA molecule. And you find that the, what are they called? The longer parts? The ladder parts? Oh, that's horrible English. But they're made out of a sugar called ribose and a phosphate and it goes sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate and those are the side parts of the ladder and then the rungs are these base pairs that we're talking about, the A, the C, the T and the G. Now these base pairs are held together by hydrogen bonds. There's two between A and T and three between C and G. That's quite a lot of detail so don't worry too much about that. In order to replicate we need to undo those base pairs so we need to pull apart the ladder and there's an enzyme which does this and it will pull the ladder apart and what it will do is expose um, both of the base pairs. Then what happens is we're going to produce a complementary strand of one of those base pairs. So if I take an example like A, T, C, G, pretend that's coming down the one side, we now need to bring RNA nucleotides. They're very similar to DNA but they have a slightly different structure because DNA can't move. We're going to make a complementary base pair based around RNA. And the only thing you need to remember with RNA is you have exactly the same bases, the difference being that you don't have thymine this time, you have uracil. So every time you have an A, rather than pairing it with a T, you're going to pair it with a U. So I think I just said, did I just say ACTG? It doesn't really matter. But if I had an A on my DNA strand, I'm going to pair it with a U. C, I'm going to pair it with a G. T, I'm going to pair it with an A. C, I'm going to pair it with a G. I think I just screwed that up, but you get the idea. <laughs> so you're forming your RNA strand. And we call this the messenger RNA because it's carrying the message. This has all happened inside the nucleus, by the way. And what happens now is we need to get that RNA strand to leave the nucleus. So the mRNA leaves the nucleus via the nuclear pore and it goes and attaches to a ribosome. It sits on the ribosome with all of its bases exposed. And then what happens is a second type of RNA called tRNA comes along. And what it does is it brings along the amino acid which corresponds to the correct sequence of mRNA bases. So you'll have three bases, because three bases is what each amino acid is dictated by, and then depending on that sequence found, you'll bring a different amino acid along. Before you know it, you've got a chain of amino acids building up, each joined by a peptide bond, and then when 
it reaches what's called a stop codon. Now this is very technical, it will literally cut off the end of the amino acid and that will be done. And that's basically how our proteins begin their lives. Although they're not alive, but that's basically what happens. You'll have your chain of amino acids which can then fold and become a polypeptide and a protein. Remember two key words. Transcription is the process which occurred in the nucleus and that was the production of the mRNA strand. Translation is what happens when the amino acids are brought to the ribosome. It is complicated and there are a lot of key terms, but hopefully this video you'll have found it a bit helpful. And don't forget to leave me a comment and subscribe because I love hearing from you guys. And um, I'm going to go film another video, so see ya!